You can do it! Pop-ups. They're a great way to create dynamic forms in space just by using planes. We will show you some tips to help you make your own pop-up. For inspiration, you may wish to look at pop-ups made by others first. Looking at professional pieces and trying to reverse engineer them is a good way to learn how the piece functions. You don't need to take a book apart in order to analyze it. Pop-up books are built to seem complicated because dazzling the reader is the designer's goal, such as in this work by Robert Sabuda. If you look closely, though, you will notice that the mechanisms work on a couple of basic principles. Folds. The folds, even on the most complicated pieces, are based upon mountain folds and valley folds. This is a mountain fold, and this is a valley fold. You create the fold first by marking where it will be and then scoring the paper with a bone folder or a wooden knitting needle. Scoring compresses the paper fibers but does not cut them. The paper will now have a tendency to fold inwards. Be sure to score on the correct side though. Once the score is made, the paper will always have a tendency to bend in that one direction. Once creased, burnish the fold leaving a nice crisp edge. Skipping the score and burnish steps results in folds that are wrinkled and sloppy. Slots and tabs. Basic mechanisms can trigger peripheral movements through the use of slots and tabs. They can also stabilize planes or create extra volume. To make slots and tabs, measure the width of the tab and add just a little extra to the length of the slot when cutting. If the slot is too long, the tab may be too loose. You can always cut more if easement is needed. Fold the tab sides in and unfold once through the slot. There is no need to glue as the tabs once unfolded will not escape. Tension. The action of the pop-up relies on tension. By opening and closing the picture plane, also known as the spread, two planes draw close or move away from one another. To take advantage of this together than apart motion, paper engineers will normally place the main mechanism over the centerfold, also known as the gutter. Like a bridge, one part of the mechanism will be on one side of the gutter and then span over to the other side. In basic mechanisms, the fold, whether it be a mountain or valley, needs to align with the gutter in order for the spread to close properly. Designing the piece so that the interior does not show when closed is a sign of good craftsmanship. This one will need to be resized. Helpful tips. Before designing your piece, decide how far it will open. 90 degree mechanisms are usually associated with cards and have a definite front and back. This valentine from around 1910 is a good example of a 90 degree design. Book spreads are normally 180 degrees, allowing the pop-up to be viewed from multiple sides and angles. There are several books that illustrate basic mechanisms. Do not be afraid to experiment and modify existing solutions to fit your needs. Be sure to use heavy paper, such as a 110-pound or index card paper, as lighter weights will wear out quickly. When making a prototype, you may wish to use low-stick tape to allow repositioning. Once placement is decided, adjusted, and marked, the pieces can then be removed to be used as templates. A light box is useful in making copies of the different pieces. If you don't have a light box, use a sunny window. When working at night, you can take glass from a picture, place it over two tables, boxes, or stacks of books, and place a lamp beneath. Don't be cheap. Change out your blades often for the cleanest cut. Cuticle scissors are very helpful for small detail work. A prototype is not the same thing as a white paper dummy. A white paper dummy is fully functional, clean, and client ready. It does not usually have any imagery, just the functioning parts. 
tabs may be inserted to the back side of the spread for stability and to hide their ends beneath the picture plane. This is a design choice. It is not necessary to hide the entire mechanism. Supports can be colored to blend with the background. Do not worry if the backside looks messy, as this support may be hidden with a cover. Make sure to have the spread completely open when gluing down the cover. If glued while closed, the item may not open completely or a gap will appear along the spine. Choose glues that are not too watery to avoid paper buckling. Let dry completely before testing the mechanism. Constructing samples allows you to experiment with adhesives and mediums before using them on the final work. Color the piece before assembling. Often it's too difficult to get into areas with pencil or brush after the construction. Be sure to erase all pencil lines before applying your medium of choice. And remember to color both the front and the back of all pieces as the finished work will be viewed from multiple angles. Students in the past have had great success with colored pencils, pens, markers, watercolors, and acrylic washes. Collage can be a good design solution if the papers are thin. Colored tissue paper is a popular collage choice. Please be warned, thick acrylic will want to stick to itself when the weather is humid. Other mediums not recommended include pastels, charcoals, oils, and crayons due to smudging. With these tips, you now know enough to get started on your own pop-up design. We know you can do it.